Hi, my name is Daniel Dombavand, and today I'm going to show you how to create an ASP.NET Core 2.0 web API, then implement and interact with the third party API. The API that we'll be interacting with today is the Giphy API. Giphy is a website that stores thousands of GIF images. By entering search criteria, we are returned a GIF image that relates to what we've searched for. In this tutorial, we will start by creating an ASP.NET Core 2.0 web API, then jump straight into implementing and interacting with our Giphy web API. Let's start off by creating a blank ASP.NET Core project inside Visual Studio. If you are unsure on how to create a web API, head along to the link on screen now. We're going to head over to our startup.cs class. As you can see, a lot of code is read. So we need to build the solution first. We're then going to add MVC to our configure services and configure methods inside our startup class. This is so we can use and ensure that all requests to our web application are routable to the MVC framework. We want to create our Giphy controller that the user can call to interact with our web API. Create a controllers folder named controllers, then right click and select add controller to add our controller. We're going to select API controller empty from the scaffold template window. Name the controller Giphy controller. A quick side note, throughout this code you'll see me use the async and await keywords. Asynchronous program in C Sharp requires a full blog post of its own, as such I won't go into too much detail. The method that we're going to create is a get random gif with a return type of i action result. We're going to have one parameter, a string named search criteria. This is so the user can pass in the search criteria as they need. We're going to be using a coding technique called wishful programming. Wishful programming basically means that we write code with the idea that we already have classes and methods available to us. We then create the classes and methods as we need them. We know that the controller is going to call off to a Giphy services class, so we can write the following inside our controller underscore Giphy services dot get random GIF based on search criteria and then pass in the variable search criteria. We then add to the bottom of our method a return of OK with result. We're going to use .NET Core's inbuilt dependency injection library. We'll be injecting the classes interface that we create into the constructors of each class as we need them. Let's create a private read-only iGiphy service with the name underscore Giphy services. We then want to initialize this service in our constructor. We're going to store our iGiphy services and GIF, Giphy services in the Giphy.libs project. So let's create that class library project. Delete the generic class.cs that is created. We are now going to add a new folder called services and add a class file named Giphy services. We're going to make our class public so that we can access it from the controller. We are also going to add an interface named iGiphy services. We're then going to add a reference from the Giphy service to our Giphy.libs project and we'll make the iGiphy service interface public. We will now build the solution to see what errors we have. We can then head back to our Giphy controller and import the iGiphy service reference. As you might have spotted, I named the underscore Giphy services incorrectly, so I'll just fix that up now. 
So now we have our Giphy services that we can reference and we can see that the method name that is called on the Giphy services is red. So we'll now create the method inside that Giphy services class. Our method name will be what we've used in our controller. Get random GIF based on search criteria with the string parameter search criteria. Using wishful programming, we're going to do the same as we did in the controller and write the code as if the classes and methods exist. We'll be calling our class getRandomGIF with a field name of underscore getRandomGIF and the method name of returnRandomGIF based on tag, passing in the search criteria parameter. We'll now create our field at the top of the class using the interface name that we'll create shortly. I get random GIF. And we'll initialize it in the constructor. We also want to create a model name Giphy model. This will be the return type for the get random GIF based on search criteria. The Giphy model will be what is returned from the Giphy API endpoint. We'll create a models folder and then create a class called Giphy model. and we'll make this class public. From looking what is returned from the raw Giphy API endpoint, we know what we want. We want to follow the same naming that is returned back from the endpoint, so let's create a property of ionumble named data. We're going to specify the type that the ionumble will use. This will be another class model named data. We will now create a class named data. Make that public and follow the same name as we've seen in the Giphy endpoint. Let's create a string property named bit.ly underscore gif underscore url. We can go back to our Giphy services class and import the Giphy model reference. We now need to add our public methods from the Giphy services into the interface. Let's now right click, select add, and add our folder Giphy. We're now going to add a class. And we're going to call that get random gif. We are now going to add an interface and call that I get random GIF. We will make both the interface and the class public.
We also want our classes to implement the interfaces that we are creating. So let's add that to the get random GIF class. We are also going to add the iGiphy services that we created earlier to the Giphy services class. Back into the get random GIF class, we'll now create a method with a return type of Giphy model. And we'll call that return random GIF based on tag. And we'll pass in the parameter search criteria. Inside this method, we're going to create a constant. This will hold the Giphy key. Currently, we'll leave this blank, but you'll need to head along to the Giphy development site and create your own key. They are free. We're going to be using the HTTP client library. To make our request to Giphy, we need to wrap this call inside a using statement. We are newing up the HTTP client ready to use with our variable name client. We're going to store the URL inside a variable named URL. You can see what URL we should be using from the Giphy documentation. If you head along to their website, they have good documentation on how to use their API, including the URL that we should be using. HTTP client has a get async method inside it. So if we call client.getAsync and pass in the URL, we'll store this in a response variable. Because we're using async, we need to read out the response that we get back and deserialize from a JSON object to our Giphy model. We need to install newtonsoft.json in order to be able to use the deserialize function. If you head along to Package Manager Console and type in install package newtonsoft.json, ensure you are installing it in the correct project. Once that's installed, we can now use the JSON convert and deserialize our object into our Giphy model. And we'll also pass in the JSON variable from above. Okay, so we're almost there. We need to add our public method that we've created in our get random GIF class into our interface. And We'll go through some of our classes, making sure that we have the correct names for our interfaces that we're implementing and ensuring that we have um, the correct references. And now we'll build the solution. And it looks to have succeeded. When coding, you often need to go back and do some tidy ups. Often you find the first cut of code that you write will need rework. It's important that you go back through your code and make sure it's as clean and tidy as possible. Here we're going to do two tidy ups. We're going to change the properties in our models. If we have a lowercase d for data, we're going to change that to a capital D. For the data class, we have underscores and lowercase. We need to have this naming exact in order for the deserializer to deserialize the value. So instead of using the naming as it stands, we can add the following decorators. Data contract and data member name equals, then change our property name. 
while keeping the original name inside the data member. We also want to keep our project names consistent. So let's add .api to our project where our controllers live. And we'll also change our giphy.libs to giphy-service.libs. This keeps it consistent throughout the project. In order for us to be able to hit our endpoint, we need to add our route decorator. So we'll first add our HTTP GET and we'll also add the route decorator. Our route's going to be v1 forward slash giphy forward slash random. Search criteria. The final part that we need to implement is our dependency injection. We need to bind our interfaces with our classes to allow us to inject them and use them in each class. So head along to the startup.cs class and under configure services we can add the following services.add singleton i giphy services comma giphy services. We'll also add the services dot add singleton i get random gif and bind that to get random gif class. .NET Core comes with a built-in dependency injection framework. If you want to know more about dependency injection, then head along to my website danieldombavan.com. The link is below in the YouTube description. Now that we've built that, we can run the application. We'll grab the local host with the port and we'll put that into Postman. We'll also add our route that we entered into our controller along with a search criteria. And our services returned us the URL. In summary, we created a .NET Core Web API. We then created our controller that called off to our services class. We then called off to a Giphy class that then interacted with the Giphy API. We used a coding style called Wishful Programming, and we also used Dependency Injection. Thanks so much for watching, and remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter.